DaVinci Resolve made a splash at NAB23 and today we're going to run through one of the exciting new features, the Relight tool. Instead of using Power Windows, Relight is a tool that enables you to enhance the authenticity and naturalness of your scene's lighting by generating a surface map that assesses the perceived depth and orientation of objects in your 2D image and then from this surface map, Relight applies a lighting effect, allowing light to reflect off objects more realistically based on their depth. It is amazing. But let's address two things right away. This is a studio version plugin, so it's not available on the free version of DaVinci Resolve. Secondly, this tool is only currently available in the beta of 18.5. As always, it's never recommended to download a beta while you're in the middle of a project. So if you still need to upgrade to the studio version or you're unable to switch to the beta version for a while, let me be a test guinea pig for this software update. So there's always the situation, right? Where we wish we had more lights on set. Previously in Resolve, if we needed to add some brightness into an area, we would likely create a power window and add some illumination to the talent or the subject that we wished to illuminate. The issue with this method is that there is no perception of depth and it's confined within the environment of the mask. The Relight tool looks to remedy that. It is important to note that the Relight effect enhances the perception of depth without generating any factual 3D data. So when a spotlight is directed at an object, the effect does not produce a shadow on the wall behind it. Instead, it is intended to emphasize the existing lighting in your scene. So bear that in mind. It's not magically gonna add an aperture nova into the scene. But without further ado, let's look at how to use it. Now, first of all, Performing an image analysis, generating a surface map, and then subsequently relighting the outcome requires considerable computer resource, making it a challenge to achieve real-time performance on existing hardware with a single node. It is possible to do such a thing, but Blackmagic recommends sharing the burden between two relight nodes. So let's add a node here. We're gonna add relight from the OFX panel, then add a secondary node, and again, add relight. The chain link between the nodes needs to be displayed as such. There we go. Got that? Okay, so the initial node is going to be responsible for the surface map generation and rendering, storing the results in the cache, which will then be passed to the second node for relighting. So on node one, we're going to select output surface map, and this will create a surface map. As seen on the screen, it's a colorful looking output, but we can also really see the depth of the image. Now to adjust the settings for the effect, we're gonna to go to the second Relight node and choose Import from Input 2 in the Surface Map settings. Now, when I go over to the Preview Monitor, notice how quickly we can move around the Lighting tool within the Preview Monitor, it's, it's in real time. Yet, if I was to disable this and have all of the computing power in one node, you can see that even with a GTX 3080, this is very sluggish. So let's change it back, and by the way, of course, in the viewer, we need to have the OFX overlay active. Okay, so we now have the depth map preview and on the preview screen, we have a light source. And as just noted, if I were to drag the light source and move it across the screen, we can see that the light affects the different areas of the image differently. It not only illuminates as if they were a practical light, but we can also see the dark areas fall further into shadow. This is a significant difference between using a power window and the relight tool. It figuratively, and I guess literally to some extent, is placing a 3D light source into our image. But remember, it does not cast shadows. So there are three methods to adjust the light in various ways. We have the directional option, which generates a light source that originates from a particular direction at an infinite distance. The point source, which generates a light source from a central point of your choosing and the spotlight option, which creates a cone-shaped light source. The method that you will choose is gonna depend on the type of shot that you have. We will look at the point source for this tutorial, but ideally, the directional property can cast a very broad light in a single direction, kind of making it ideal for replicating the behavior of natural light and even changing the time of day. And then the spotlight property can be used to focus the light onto a very specific location, and it, that changes to the cone and drop-off controls. So after choosing the selected method, there are a variety of sliders that you can adjust in order to create the type of light that you're looking for. Now, I know this is a step-by-step -step tutorial, but the sliders or the properties, I think, speak for themselves in what they do. 
Uh, but we will look at the surface properties as there may be some terms that you're not familiar with. So the surface properties dictate how the light is reflected on the surface, affecting its appearance. Enabling them will create a metallic like shine on some of the reflected surfaces. So the glossiness is going to increase the amount of reflected light in the glossy range. And specularity determines the degree of metallic appearances in the reflections. Now these two features can really help add the illusion of an additional light as when you look at objects, especially reflective objects, and the skin can also be reflective, what you'll know is around these hot areas, they're called specular highlights. The relight tool aids in adding these, which again really helps sell the effect of an additional light being placed on set. Okay, so now we have that preview that you think represents the additional light that you would like to add. You now need to deselect the relight in map preview and we'll return to our original footage. Now, your initial thought may be the same as mine. <laughs> Hang on, uh, this is no different from where we started. And that's true. So now what we now need to do is go to the primary reels and dial in the light. So by adding a slight amount of gain or maybe the offset, we can see that the relight has been correctly applied. But when the gain is now applied, it is instead confined to the rules set out in the relight parameters. So just run over that again. You still now need to go to the primary wheels and add some gain, add some highlights into the image. But in doing so, it's being added in the way that you set out in the relight tool. So we're only adding light to the areas where that artificial light exists. I hope that makes sense. As you can see from these examples, the tool is incredibly powerful and really does help mimic the likes of additional light. And we can additionally add color to the tool in order to mimic certain types of day like the evening light. But yes, this is it. And before I leave you, you should also know that if your shot moves, you will want to add OFX trackers and analyze the clip to the node before adding it to the relight feature, because again, it's intense. So I've been Lewis with Fedivo. Uh, if you would like to see more Resolve content, especially as it's released, let, let us know. I'm a certified DaVinci Resolve trainer and uh, I will catch you guys soon.